day 13. Earlier today, I went to the rail station at the first intersection. Spiders. While not as outright dangerous as fast zombies with swords, spiders are super gross. Most of the time. Sometimes the fat ones are a bit cute when they get stuck. I looked around the area after clearing out some spiders and didn't really see much. I mean, it's a typical cart handling station. I broke the only spider spawner that was in there, but I saw signs of cracking stone, which means there may be more spiders tunneling nearby. Well, I don't feel like mining around in the walls to try and exterminate them all so the dumb spiders can have their train station for all I care. Oh, I did find a chest with a lot of pink wool. I took that. It's probably some building material shipment that got left at the station during the evacuation. I redid the bedroom area and put carpet all over the place. Yay! It's so cute now. I also found a little pumpkin. Probably part of a food shipment? Well, I made a cute jack-o'-lantern so I can have someone to talk to while I have my meals. I think I will name him Nosliu. That's a cute name. Alright, so here we are at intersection 2. I would like to take a look at Miner's Cavern to see what Tolly was talking about. Obviously the spiders she was talking about are there, and obviously also she may have destroyed some spawners, but there's still plenty here. I'm pretty sure that's going to be two different spawners there because of the two different types of spiders and then there's certainly going to be more that way. Between episodes, I did, as you saw there at the beginning, do a whole bunch of moving stuff. Mostly, mostly I raided the scientists area. up at Windchill and pulled not quite all of the loot but all of the stuff that I think is uh, I don't particularly like that get to work even fa faster with this free buff vendor by Main Corp what that said Main Corp I'm not sure what that block is. What are the chances of that being a trap? Pretty, pretty high, right? Probably. Yes, I got all of the the major loot out of Windchill and brought it back to the geothermal plant. Expanded the farm area quite a bit and got some stuff planted. But I want, before we explore more of that area, I want to just kind of take a look. I don't know if we'll do too much here. Oh dear. Ow. Okay, well, that was n nice, I guess. Oh no. <sighs> Well, that was exciting. Um, they'll probably have despawned by the time we get back there, so I think I think I'm just gonna go for it. Um. I don't know if you can tell, but my computer is currently acting up again, and I'm not sure why. Between episodes, it was fine, and I'm reasonably certain it's not my recording software, so I don't know what's going on. 
yeah, I raided these things and the, um, the domes, pulled most of the plants out, and the sort of loot that, that isn't really, well, the sort of stuff that isn't going to be useful quickly or soon, I left there and pulled all of what I consider to be useful stuff for later out. Uh, most of what's st still back there is like building materials, which I'll come back and get if we start, or if and when we start actually building with stuff. I don't particularly think there's much point in taking all of that stuff out now. Something I would like to check out is that right there. I think that's a lighting glitch, but I can't quite tell. And I'd like to check that out just to see if it's some kind of bit of treasure or something. I, I doubt it. I'm pretty sure that's a lighting glitch, but still I'd like to check it out. There doesn't seem to be anything in the Boreal Valley otherwise, other than this. Although I would also like to look at the top of this ridge where there's trees growing, just to see. Also want to take a look down there at some point. Probably up there. Yeah, but this episode in particular... Is that gonna stop? Yes. This episode in particular, I just wanted to take a gander. And, um... Don't wanna step on that. Yeah. It looks interesting. I'm not seeing any soul sand. Guess it must be further in. Unless this is... I can't tell. Well, what I can tell is that it's cold. And that we're probably not quite equipped to deal with that just yet. If for no other reason than because the, my computer is acting up, um, I think it would be better to wait until it's not. So I think what we're going to do is get stuff together. And I want to go and upgrade our stuff, as I said last episode. Oh, by the way, real quick. When I came through here between episodes, I did actually see the uh, the mutton that we had we had missed last time right there. It has since despawned, obviously, and I didn't pick it up because I didn't want to go in there off camera. But yeah, it is it was that it was there, we did miss it. But yeah, I want to upgrade our equipment. We we have lost some levels, but that's okay. Um one thing I would like to discuss briefly is the idea I had last episode of using the uh, the zombie spawners as an XP farm. I am not sure I, I really want to do that, actually. Because I kind of feel like it goes against the spirit of the map, so to speak. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like 
I want to play this map more exploration and less sit in one spot and and build a a zombie farm to farm XP. For one thing, that'd take a long time that we could be spending going places and doing stuff. And for another thing, because of how Vex has us set up, I feel like that might potentially make things too easy. I'm not entirely sure. Like, if we just spent a huge amount of time kidding ourselves up with, like, you know, level 30 enchantments and stuff like that, I, 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 don't, I don't know. That doesn't feel right. I will leave it open as an option if if it feels like we need to, but for the moment at least I don't think we need to. So I'm not going to. At least not for now. And a big part of the reason that I don't think we need to is right here. I think we're probably good. Between that and this, and all of this, I don't particularly feel like we're going to need to do any XP farming, at least not just yet. Again, I will leave it open as an option. If things go south, I'm not going to just categorically state, no, we're not in this series going to be making a mob farm out of spawners. Um, but for now at least, I don't think we're going to do that. We're going to use what we've got available to us. Um, I think I'm going to use this to make these and those. I think this is about all of the iron we're, we, we've gotten so far. And I there's a good chance that it's the only iron we're going to get until we loot more from somewhere. So I don't want to just waste it willy-nilly. We've got flints and steels. So there's no point in using it on that. We've got all of the tools and the weapons. So there's no no reason to use it there. We have anvils here. We have some spare anvils from wind chill. I don't particularly feel like we'll need hoppers, but even if we do, there's some there and more there. We've got iron bars here. We've got lots more iron bars back up at wind chill that I didn't bring. What else could we make out of iron? I don't, I don't, there's not really anything. Got mine carts. I'm not turning it into mine tracks. That's that's an enormous waste. So yeah, I think I think the best thing to do with this iron here is going to be to augment our armor. Um, I took a look, and if you if well, I can show you right now. Six armor, six armor. So this is pretty good. The fur lined stuff. And there's potential that we'll find more, but for right now, I think this is probably the way to go. I think. Mm, yeah. I think we're going to do that. And we're going to use these things. Hmm. Definitely the protection. The fact that Vex is giving us a blast protection for book 
suggests to me that maybe we should actually use the Blast Protection book. Methinks. I also think that, that I would like to actually get unbreaking on some of this stuff. How much do you get from one of these? Okay. To be honest, I don't think I've ever actually used these things. Obviously, feather falling would be really good to have on boots, just in case. Uh, I wonder. I don't think this usually comes up, but if you do this... Does it, does it make it cheaper because it's combining with the existing... No. Okay. Thought it might reduce the amount that you need. Because, because there's already protection on there. I think I want to put the smite on the axe. I think. Have that be like supremely good undead killing weapon and then the sword for just general purpose use typical so my question immediately is is proje projectile protection worth it i feel like it might be especially since i think because this is two, and this is two, I think those do actually combine. If you do them on an anvil, don't they? Shouldn't they? No, not that. They sure do. And that's three levels. Yeah. I think that is worth it. not the highest level of protection, but it's pretty good. Efficiency 2 on a pickaxe. Mm, I think I would rather have unbreaking, actually, because... Because of the scenario we're in. Same there. Rather have unbreaking it. What's what's this? Unbreaking three level seventeen. That might be worth it because if we put smite from if, from what I remember, using an axe as a weapon does drain its durability more quickly. Eh, it's, um, hmm. I don't know about that. Getting to 17 is gonna be a lot. Well, hey, what do you know? Just, just about enough. Because we can do that. And that's unbreaking three. And then we can put the uh, the smite book on it. And that'll be a lot of damage against undead. Then... Unbreaking on the pick. That sounds good. Oh, just give me unbreaking for goodness sake. I this 
Although I guess you could argue because it would only be on one piece that wouldn't be as worth it. But no, because these are... Like, that's five armor. It... Hold on a second. Does... Does this... No, it is counted as a different... Maybe not. Oh. Okay, so... You can... You can use it to repair... Chain, but you can't use chain to repair it. So you would lose the fur-lined trait. Kind of expected it to work like that, but that's still a little disappointing. What about a book? Hmm. That's two levels. Versus one level there. And then probably a couple more levels there. That's probably worth it because it would mean that we still have the Protection 2 book, which we could then do this with, which is, I'm pretty sure, cheaper than doing it that way. It's not. But that's an additional Protection 3 that we can use. And we're running out of levels. Unbreaking. Unbreaking. Yes. And we can put protection on that. Protection 3. So that would be two things with protection 3. And then one with projectile protection 3. Which is quite good. And then I think the blast protection on the boots with the feather falling. Oof, that's not cheap. Okay. Is that is that worth it? I think that's worth it. I am I'm of the opinion that if he gave us the book right here at the starting location, then that probably means that it's a um you know, a bit of a, a, what do you call it? It's, um, foreseeing something, I think. That's probably worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, and efficiency. I'll take that for sure. Um, actually, I'm going to hold on to these two because I don't really want to use them just yet. Just, I, I don't want to use, basically, I don't want to put them on a pick that I'm then using normally. So, you know, um... I don't want to just use it up willy-nilly, either of those books, which are quite valuable, I think. I think we will hold on to them until a actual proper, proper use case comes up for them, like something to fortune, or some reason to actually use the, um... The Silk Touch. I do think... Ooh, that's not bad. I do think I want to do something with, with an ice road to get from here to there more quickly. But... I'm not sure if that's worth doing just yet. Because uh, that would use up more than one silk touch pick, I think. Getting the necessary... 
At least if it's an iron pick. Oh. By the way, that sound effect that came up... Uh, it wasn't last episode, it was the episode before. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the, uh, the soul sand. Which, um, I thought in, in my modded series, that sound effect came up when we were in the nether a lot. And I thought it was like a mob or something out out there, like some kind of modded something. Well, I mean, I guess it is a modded something, but like an actual something dangerous that I needed to worry about sort of thing out, out there in the distance somewhere. And, um... Yep, no, it's apparently just the sound effect for Soul's Hand. Or, or possibly... No, I don't, I think it'd be so the Soul's Hand. I don't, actually, I don't know. Do these sorts of things make noise? Like, crops? I don't think they do. I don't know, I might be wrong. Either way, I think... Unbreaking for the sword is probably the way to go? Question mark? Um, what about a book? Oh, no, that's not. Hello? Why? Power one. Yep. Done deal. No Bane of Arthropods. I mean, I for this particular sort of map, Bane of Arthropods might actually be pretty good. But I don't know how many spiders we're likely to, to go up against. So far, the majority of things have been zombies and skeletons. Either way, what else can we... Can you... Can you unbreaking a shield? I don't think you can do that, but can you... We don't have a book for it. Hmm. Well, that right there. For sure. Actually, we could maybe put together a quite good book. Uh, but a uh, bow. Not book. Bow. Power one, power two, 16 levels. That's too much. What if we got another power one? We might be able to slowly build our way up towards... Because we've got plenty of bows, and they're not hard to make. Hey, would you look at that? That would make a pretty quick... Hmm. I, you know what? Yeah, because that's... That right there... Plus that right there, plus that right there is power three. That's a lot of extra damage. Eh. Although that only requires ten. Is that... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Um, what if we smelt something? What if is this? No, because I didn't put the stuff into. The furnaces. Did I? Is that how that works? You know, I don't. I don't remember. I. I know. There's a way to basically bank XP in these thing. I. That might be a different version. Um. 
let's 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 just cook up a batch of potatoes. That might do it. I don't think that's gonna do it. But we can put the bow together later. I think I think sharpness two is probably more worth it. At least in the short term. I think. I don't know, now that I say that I'm not I'm not too sure. Because we do have this. What is what is that going to require? How many levels? Two. Well, that's not going to be hard to get back up to. Yeah, well, that certainly didn't work. Well, at least we have potatoes. So that's nice, I guess. Um. Hmm. We're so close, though, is the problem. If we weren't this close to level 10, I'd say uh, we'll just go with the bows instead. But, but, who does, who does, why? Hmm. Well, tell you what. Something we could potentially do is actually put together the bow instead and then go shooting some stuff. Actually, I'm going to take this. Does this have anything special? No. It's not like these. Hmm. I was expecting this to bring our armor up a little further than that, I'm going to be honest, because this is, this is a pretty sizable upgrade. Like, 3652 versus 1. Five, four, one. That doesn't seem as much. Oh well, whatever. In fact, something we could do is go back to Windchill and beat up some of those zombies. That'll be relatively safe. It'll be safe in particular because it it will mean that I'm not relying on my computer not freezing or or not refusing to let me turn at an inopportune moment. Those were actually really handy in getting the loot back. Oh, we could take a look at that. Hmm. Maybe on the way back. That's going to be a pain in the butt to get to, isn't it? Hmm. It is, of course, daytime. So we're going to have to wait a bit. Uh, you know what? Let's not wait a bit. Let's go take a look at that broken building off over that way somewhere. I'm curious. I'm not sure... Hmm. Part of me wants to continue exploring here, because we were kind of set up to explore here, but part of me also wants to go back and take a look in the same direction that Tolly went. 
I noticed this between episodes when I was clearing that out. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, there's, it's, it's whatever. But yeah, I don't know, like, cause, cause Tali didn't come this way so far as we've read. So I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if I want to continue in this area. It does seem like there's potential that it's it's more difficult. But on the other hand, those fast zombies hit like a truck. And the, uh, the skeletons over at the mill were not that fast, so I don't really know. There's the glacial wall, and here's this. Oh, did I misread? I sure did. It looked... Unless this is a different structure. No. No, this is it. I must have misread it in the dark. It's not actually an exploded building. It is a, um... Stone cutting and ore... Depot? Um, it's not a warehouse. That's for sure. Gold! Oh, you know what gold will be good for? Um, smelting and getting XP. <laughs> It'll also be useful at some point when we get enough to warrant getting carrots. Golden carrots and possibly golden apples as well. I don't know that I can be bothered to pick all of this up at the moment, though, I'm gonna be honest. What have we got over here? Well, I think we've got a cave system back there, judging by that noise. Um, it's about noon. I suppose I could pick up a bit of this. Oh, it's not solid, really. Uh, you know what? There's a good chance that there's a spawner around in here somewhere, isn't there? Although I don't know. These frozen zombies all seem to have spawners that have that are covered in snow. Then again, there are definitely some over the other side of the rail line that aren't covered in snow, that are buried somewhere, so I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to collect a stack of this, and then I'll start headed back. 64 gold ore. Interesting. That didn't make as much of a dent as I expected it to. So there is actually quite a bit out here. But, I don't want to immediately start breaking our picks doing this. And we don't have an immediate use for gold. What in the world is this meant to be? Is is there... No? I don't know. That's odd. I don't like that one bit. I also don't like that the, the, the second I looked at that, the wind stopped blowing. That was so creepy. What the heck? Um, is that trapped? 
No. Okay. Uh. Ha. Huh. I don't know why, but this makes me immensely nervous for some reason. The fact the wind stopped blowing definitely doesn't help. Does that mean that this place... The sun is about to set. I don't want to find out if this place spawns wither skeletons. We just got a whole bunch of gear upgrade, and I don't want to immediately lose it. But that was... that's clearly a place where a box of parts would be, but it's gone. I guess... Is that because the researchers moved it into there? That doesn't feel like that makes sense. I would expect some kind of, like... Uh, I don't know. A book saying that, hey, we found this thing. But then again, there's no, not really any... Any of that sort of stuff in here, so I don't know. Maybe that is what happened. They found it over there and moved it in here. But really, if that's the story that Vex is intending, he's not telling it, so I feel like that's not what's going on there. Hello. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good upgrade. Probably not worth using on these yahoos, though. Come to think of it. Hello. My computer is really not wanting me to turn, and I don't understand why. This is really annoying. But it's a good portion of the reason that I'm not particularly keen to go out fighting stuff right now. Oi! Really? Yo! The, the, the entrance, over here. They usually stack up right here, we go. Do you need to be careful doing this th because these things do drop our temperature considerably and very quickly. Why are they suddenly spawning so many more than usual? Or at least seems like more than usual. Although I say that, by this time, usually we've gone to sleep, so maybe that's why. Um, hmm. Um, getting a whole bunch of XP ain't gonna do us any good if we die with it. But we have gold ore, so let's use that. Let's not use all of that. Really curious about that castle. I also find it really interesting that it is at precisely the distance necessary for it to be obscured in the fog normally 
except when there there is light shining from the other side with the aurora or the sunset. It's a really cool effect. I I I don't think Vex intended that, like designed it to be that way, because I'm pretty sure the fog up here is is altitude fog from yeah, 137Y. Altitude fog from dynamic surroundings, I'm pretty sure, is what is causing it to be so foggy up here. But it's it's still kind of cool that it isn't precisely the distance necessary to get that silhouetting effect. Did I mention these fills drop your your temperature really fast? Cause wow. And we were almost at level ten. What is the proximity, I wonder? Oh, for goodness sake, come on. I hear them. I don't see them. Where are they? Oh. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. No, 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 no. Come on. Really? It's dawn anyway. No, we're so close. For crying out loud, how many are there? just about be able to make it this time. 
was not expecting this to be quite such a pain in the butt, I'm gonna be honest. I still hear four. How many of them are there? They. It seems like the spawn rate just ramps up. Hey, we made it to 10. I'm not entirely sure that was really worth it, I'm gonna be honest. Well, either way, we did do it. Now we can go home and get sharpness on the sword. I'm gonna call that good enough and go ahead and get out of here. Interesting that the better armor doesn't seem to have really helped all that much. And by interesting, I mean slightly worrying. But yeah, there. Did you see the way that the fog seemed to lift as we came down that ramp? I'm pretty sure that's the... uh altitude fog from dynamic surroundings. Hmm. Interesting we've stayed at basically the same temperature for the whole trip. That is interesting. Maybe... Maybe this armor upgrade is actually quite good. Or at least just about enough to keep us at a constant temperature during the day. And maybe that's that's the intention behind those frozen zombies is you you're they're just meant to completely overwhelm any cold protection you have. Oh, we're slowly getting colder. Real slowly. There's that doohickey. Whatever that is. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lighting glitch. But I don't know. It kind of doesn't look like one. Uh, but it kind of does. It's, it's not going away. No, oh, yep, yeah, that was a lighting glitch. Okay, well, glad I checked just to be sure. But let's go ahead and get back into where it's slightly warmer. Eh, okay. Cold, cold, cold and hungry. Uh, hmm. Ooh, another tree grew. Um, I'd like to get the mushrooms growing as well. Um, oh, I was just about to start firing up the furnaces, but nope, nope, don't bother. One of these days, I'm going to fall down that gap. That's blatantly, blatantly the reason that's there, isn't it? Oh, 
One other discovery that I made that I think I should probably show really quick is I don't I don't know what possessed me to to try this, but I pulled up the wool in all of these spots to see if there was anything underneath these blocks. And what do you know? That right there. Um... The thing with jukeboxes is that they output a redstone signal, I'm pretty sure, when you put a record into one. I'm also pretty sure that that signal won't go through the wool. At least I don't think so. Which makes me very suspicious about this. Why... Huh. Interesting. Okay. Why would there be just stone under the jukebox? I don't know. I've never really used a jukebox before, so... I don't know. That's... that's... that's kind of weird. Then again, maybe it's not, and I just don't know something about jukeboxes that would make make that make perfect sense. I know note blocks, the block underneath it changes the tone, or the the notes that it plays, but... Hmm, I, I didn't think jukeboxes had anything like that. It's a little weird. Well, whatever the case may be. Bam, sharpness too. I was really hoping for some unbreaking on that. Um, well, we have a couple more levels. Can we get... Hey, what do you know? Unbreaking three, 19 levels. Oh, that's that'd be really nice. Hmm. What would that require? Two levels? Sure. And it's still a survival knife. Cool. Well, tell you what, I think that's probably a good spot to stop this episode. It's been basically a upgrade episode and a little bit of finding out some more stuff about the areas i think i think i'm not really sure is what i think we have basically i feel like two options we can continue exploring wind chill why is this wheat not growing i don't understand yeah we can basically we can explore wind chill continue it continue to explore wind chill or we can try and follow the direction that Tolly went then again she didn't really explore the area she just poked her head into them hmm I'm not sure. Maybe next book. The next book will shed some light on what to do next. That's gonna have to wait till next episode. So... So yeah, with that I will say thank you for watching. Take care. And farewell. And if anybody happens to have any particular preference for which direction we go next, let me know.
Though, I'll be honest, it seems like at this point, everywhere we go is going to be quite dangerous from this point onward.